Okay, I'd like to give you an example inductance problem. And so um, here's a typical inductance problem. We have a battery, 10 volt battery, there's a one ohm resistor, and here's a two Henry um, inductor. And, uh, and it's gonna, we're gonna start out, it's not gonna be, this switch is, is not gonna be quite touching this. We're gonna touch it to there and let that current build up. And then at some point in the problem, we're going to take it, this switch and move it over to there so that now this part of the current, this part of the circuit will go around. Right now, no current is flowing this way if it's connected to there. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing we're going to do then is if I switch the circuit right over to there, to, to let's call these A and B. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this switch and switch it to A, then um, I know that this is going to grow. This, cur this current is going to grow. And so um, I know that the, the graph of I versus T is going to do this. It's going to grow. And there'll be a point where the EMF in here, when you first close the switch, this, this is going to act like a battery pointing this way. And um, but then it's going to die out. It's going to get to be okay with that current in there. And so um, at t equals zero, I want you to know at t equals zero, look at what the current is. At t equals zero, the current is equal to zero. I also want you to see at t equals zero, if the current is equal to zero, the voltage across the resistor is zero because it's I times R. That means that the voltage across the inductor, can you read that I hope? E sub L. If this is 10 volts and that's zero, then this has to be 10 volts. But it's 10 volts the other way. It's pointing the other way. So at first there's no current. But a long time later, many time constant, const, many time constants later, then um, this will, the current will be established in here. And do you know that the EMF across here, the EMF across here, across that inductor is di dt. It's L di dt. Negative L di dt. And look at um, the slope of the I versus T graph is the derivative of I with respect to T. And so do you see that the slope way out here is zero? It has no slope out there. So the slope is zero. And so um, that means that the EMF across here will be zero. So that means if the, if the voltage across here is zero, then all the voltage drop is there. And so there's 10 volts there. And so at infinity, at time equals infinity, the um, voltage across the resistor will be 10 volts. And the current will be um, 10 volts divided by 1 ohm. It will be 10 amps. Okay. So now we have 10 amps flowing in here. And I'm going to, real quickly, I'm going to switch this switch to here. So it will no longer be connected. I'm, I'm in effect, taking out the battery. So there, there's this big current in here. 10 amps is a lot of current. There's 10 amps of current going there. And it's not going to go this way because there's a the, the switch is open, but it will flow this way. And so when it flows this way, what happens is you might think the current would die out, but what happens is this is going to act like a battery now pushing this way. It's going to push the same direction as the current. <coughs> um, I know that because the EMF across the across an inductor is negative L di dt. And the di dt, that's negative. It's decaying. It's going to start to decay. We're it's going to go to this type of graph. But the original current will be 10 amps. Okay, so if that's 10 amps, then it's going to decay all the way to zero. Now, if you're wondering just how much EMF is going to be there, it's going to be a lot. And here's why. 
Because if there's at t equals zero, after I close the switch to here, the current in the inductor is 10 amps. The current in the resistor is 10 amps. And it's the 1,000 ohm resistor. And so if there's 10 amps going through here, and it's a thousand ohms. I'm thinking that the voltage across here, the voltage across your resistor is 10,000 ohms. Or excuse me, 10,000 volts. <coughs> so that means that the voltage across your inductor is 10,000 volts. And so... Um, if you're wondering just how fast the current is changing with time, anytime they want to know how fast the current is changing with time, say di dt, well, at t equals zero, if you wanted to know the slope of this, see that slope? It's a pretty big slope. If you wanted to know how what the slope was equal to, what di dt was equal to, then all you have to do is you have to say the e across the inductor is negative L di dt. So if I'm asking you to tell me what the slope is, if this is 10,000 volts, and that's two Henry's, then I'm thinking that the that di dt is gonna be a negative 5,000 amps per second. See how I just solve for this This as though it were an unknown. It is an unknown, but I solve for it like it was just a variable, x or something. Okay, so, um, so as you can see, if we get the right circuit, and this is a, the practical, one of the practical uses of inductors. There's a lot of them, but one of the practical uses of inductors is that um, if you put it in the right circuit in the right way, you can take 10 volts. And we can generate 10,000 volts. Wow. So without, any, without adding any, any energy source, you take 10 volts and you can generate 10,000 volts over here. And so that's why they use inductors in cars is because to, to light, to get the spark to go across the spark plug, you know, there's a little gap in the spark plug and that might be a millimeter. That gap might be from the from the one post to the other might be one millimeter, and so you're going to need about a thousand volts to go to to get a spark to go across there. And a car battery just doesn't have a thousand volts. You know, it might be twelve volts, and so twelve volts is not going to cause a spark across the gap of a spark plug. But if you hook it up in a circuit like this, you can generate ten thousand volts. And so if I had a little space over here, maybe what I'll do is I'll put it in red. This is going to get really confusing. But if you're wondering how you tap into that 10,000 volts, is you can just pull off of here. Just, you know, put your little gap there and you'll have 10,000 volts across there too. And there could be a spark. And put a little gasoline oxygen mixture in there and you're going to get an explosion. And that's what starts the car going. All right. Well, that's all I have for you right now. I'll talk to you. Bye.